That's right. This is how indemnidium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the oratrice. To put it simply, it's as if the oratrice has its own will and is a judge in its own right. This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This, too, will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, finally, the Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? I'm on button of a leg called the shots. In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Huh? Why? Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. That makes us persons related to the case. <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. Whoa, whoa! There's no need for that! Paimon thinks they have a point! That said, are they providing food? Of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's famous desserts, too. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Huh. Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. Just kidding! Just kidding! Paima will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. Huh? Here? But how? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. Wait, you're carrying a portable stove with you? Yes, I must be prepared to meet the demoiselle's baking needs whenever the fancy strikes her. I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. <laughs> Good work, you two. Then I'll get to it. Please sit tight for a moment. You'll get to taste my awesome snacks soon enough. These three are quite the interesting group. That it smelled good while it was still in the oven. Oh, it's even better now. Paimon can't stop drooling. From the way you had these two guys carrying all that stuff around, Paimon thought you'd have them do more during the baking process. But you ended up doing the entire thing by yourself, beating the egg whites, grinding almonds, everything. I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. Aren't you worried about getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites, and baking like this? <laughs> well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Don't underestimate beating egg whites, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. Anyway... Give these a try, fresh out of the oven. There's three for each of us. Only three? Well, eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? Tea is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite, strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. No need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. 
As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. The magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? The flower vase and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel, resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is... <sighs> True. None of the clues we've found thus far support the existence of this third person. But the only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the Magic Troop's members. <sighs> Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons are amazing though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! <laughs> They are my specialty, after all. And I see you've already had five of them. <laughs> what? Five? Oh, that can't be right. Paimon only counted three! Honest! Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Uh, no, no! Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon knows how to count. Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough. Wait, even you don't believe Paimon? Oh, how could you? If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then may they turn into stone in her stomach! <laughs> Alright, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. Malouse, set up the stove again, if you would. Huh? What are you doing? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. And I have the egg, sugar, and almonds. Uh, well, this really is your hobby, huh? Well, that's it for snack time. I'm going to have another look around the area. I don't know what we're looking for yet, but we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. It would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. All right, thanks for your help and for the snacks. <laughs> it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malouse, it's time to go. I'll be back if I find anything new. Alright, it's time to put our heads together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. Oh, it's probably going to be a long and difficult case. <laughs> There's no point in worrying about that now. We just need to prepare. Here, take Pylon's notes. They should help you review the situation. Ew, the whole situation is so confusing. Good plan. Impossible things don't just happen. We'll get to the truth one way or another. Ah, uh, just relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stands. Besides, I doubt Farina understands any more about what happened than we do. <laughs> Thanks, Navia. Well, we'll be going then. Best of luck to you.
Ah, finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? To be honest, you might be disappointed. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Well, now, don't you all look disappointed. Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty-handed. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Thank you, Mr. Linney. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? Why, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Linney is clearly lying. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on. Something's not right here. Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box and I definitely heard the thud. Look at those scales. Could those mean... <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Hearth? The House of the Hearth? No wonder they did something like this. So the serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. I've got a feeling that what happened on stage probably wasn't just an accident. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My oh my, don't they look flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. Oh, good 
thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. <laughs> hey, Linny! Why didn't you tell us this before? Order! Order! Mr. Linny, allow me to re-establish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the Opera House, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? Please answer my question, Mr. Linney. I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. I knew it! Well, that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. What should we do now? Granted. In that case, what is your request? Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> so you would stick to Mr. Lenny's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> Well, this is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. Yeah, sorry. Ugh. Paimon doesn't know where to start. We trusted you two. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad! I'm very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people, as many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. Right. So, you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Well, you both say that, but... Right. Let's hear your answer first, and no lies now! Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick, with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. 
So after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground, but the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paima will follow your lead however you choose. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're going to need a seriously watertight defense! Huh? Hmm... Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean! Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. Now then, if everyone would lend me their attention. At this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linney's perspective. Down began, he entered the tunnel. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands, before operating the devices such that Cowell's death would be ruled an accident. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description of the events? The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events, what Linny experienced, and what he saw. According to Linny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that altercation with Halsey. 
Linny went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. This is the actual truth. <laughs>